It's Swindon's first appearance in the semi-finals for 15 years, Bolton's first for 18 years, and the Ensley League, whose own future is the subject of so much speculation right now, is rightly proud that one of their representatives will be at Wembley in April, but which one? Swindon's Jan Arger Fjortov will be a key figure. He's top scorer in the Coca-Cola Cup this season with eight goals, having scored in every round, and he's also the leading marksman in the first division with another 14 goals. He'll be partnered in attack by 21 years old Peter Thorne, Swindon's new signing from Blackburn Rovers, but it's in defence that Steve McMahon has problems. Injuries to experienced players Paul Bodin and Ian Culverhouse have forced him to rejig the back four with youngsters Wayne O'Sullivan and Eddie Murray both playing out of position at fullback and Mark Robinson, who is a fullback, moving into the centre of defence alongside Sean Taylor. Bolton Wanderers will be looking for David Lee to continue his recent sparkling form. Lee has a habit of scoring spectacular goals on the big occasions and he got that brilliant winner against Norwich in the quarter-finals. Norwich, in fact, are one of no fewer than seven premiership clubs that Bolton have defeated in cup ties since Bruce Rioch arrived as manager. He's bought shrewdly, got the best out of long-serving players and developed talented youngsters like Jason McAteer and Alan Stubbs. With no injuries, Rioch's only selection problem today was whether to bring back top scorer John McGinley after injury. As you've heard, he's decided to stick with Republic of Ireland international Owen Coyle. That means that McGinley will be on the bench with defender Jason Lydiot and goalkeeper Aidan Davison. The Swindon substitutes are Andy Much, Andy Thompson and Fraser Digby. The referee is Paul Alcock from Red Hill in Surrey and his first job was to inspect the pitch. A lot of heavy rain in Wiltshire in the last 48 hours left the game in doubt but thankfully we've had a drying wind and groundsman Jeff Warren work through the night so it's made the pitch playable but it is likely to slice up as the game goes on. For Ron Atkinson, when you look at the relative league positions, Bolton the leaders, Swindon just one place above the relegation zone and obviously on form, Bolton over the two legs would be expected to come through. But it might not be quite as simple as that, I think. Oh, it won't be as simple as that at all, Alan. I think uh, what has been a problem for Steve McMahon, as we said earlier, having to make changes for a key game like that in your defence. Two fairly untried fullbacks, and I would expect Bolton to try and test them very early. You've talked about David Lee, what a threat he is. I think they should try and get him plenty of the ball in the early stages to test young Murray. Well, it's Bolton Wanderers in the white shirts and black shorts to get the game underway. An early mistake there by Phillips, but Stubbs, the captain, got him out of trouble as Fjortov slid in. Bolton attacking from right to left. Luke Nyholt, the Dutchman, with an early touch for Nicky Hammond. Phillips underneath it for Bolton. The strong wind is blowing, if anything, across the pitch. And the pitch, as you can already see, is very, very soft indeed, and it's going to... I would think cause problems later on. Joey Beecham with the flick header. Scott Green. And this is Simon Coleman. Called in possession, but the referee decides that that was a foul. Free kick to Bolton Wonders. Yeah, I think we'll see quite a bit of that from the Bolton back four. Every one of them is a comfortable player coming forward. They all like to get on the ball, particularly this lad. This lad is one of the best, uh, best control defenders in, in the country. Stokes. Patalainen and a lovely little knockdown to McAteer. Looks for Coyle in the middle, and that was good covering by Wayne O'Sullivan. Straight away we noticed, though, even on that move, as, as it was developing down the right hand side, Coyle pulled away to the back post, and Robinson, who's not a natural central defender, he's there again. He's not not really picking him up. McAteer going down under that hard challenge, but the referee has just pointed for a goal kick. Jason McAteer withdrawn from the Republic of Ireland squad for Wednesday's match against England, incidentally, because of the heavy schedule of games he's faced recently. They rested him just before Christmas. Played in the World Cup, of course, figured in all four matches for Ireland. But at the moment, Swindon just can't get hold of possession. This is Scott Green. At a line, and lovely layoff. Green goes forward. Good move! Excellent effort by Scott Green and his link up with Patalain and showed the uh, versatility of this Bolton team and the accuracy of their passing. 
Well, that's a lovely ball in. Watch Patalainen, just shows, and they play control balls in it. Now, Scott Green makes the break, might have had a little look sideways, and maybe could have played Coyne in. Co was uh, unmarked. Across to Coyle. Lee's in support, chance here! Oh, that's a terrific save by Hammond. Well, I said beforehand that he makes a speciality of scoring spectacular goals, David Lee. He almost got another then. Fine save by Hammond. Yeah, I mean, there's that ball in. Good little ball in. Good link of play now, as you say. David Lee gets everything on it he could wish. Great save from the goalkeeper. Another corner then to Bolton. Thompson will take it. Drops for Stubbs. Poor defending by Swindon, and they paid the price in the tenth minute. Bolton Wanderers take the lead. A rare goal indeed by Alan Stubbs. His last goal almost a year ago. And Ron, you might remember, it came against Aston Villa in the FA Cup. Yeah, well, look at this. This isn't this isn't a surprise. I mean, that's good skill. He could almost have taken that with his head at first. I thought he was going to attack it in the air. Shows a lot of calmness, realises the defender's got under the ball. Good piece of chest control. Runs away from him a little bit, but gets the stretch, and he's got great feet. But that's not a surprise, that ball. Bolton have started very positively. They, they can sense that Swindon have got problems with their team. Steve McMahon had it all on to get a decent side out today. The same before the game, and uh, full credit to Bolton. They've gone straight for the throat from the word go. Well, what a wonderful start, then, for the Lancashire side. Stubbs takes it early. And Robinson just got a cross in front of his man. And the referee has deemed that to be obstruction on Owen Coyle. Good decision, that. Very often you see defenders just trying to sort of block the ball off and make no real attempt to play it. For me, Robinson was just trying to hold um, Coyle off. Hammond organising a two-man wall. That's all it is in front of Thompson, who's about to take the kick. Well, look at the near post. Yes, they're queuing up on the near post, and Robinson recognised that fact and got the danger clear again. Don't think against people like Thompson and that, with the way they can deliver, you can leave spaces like that. But once again, that's down to the fact they've got inexperienced defenders in there today. Another Bolton corner, they lead 1-0, Thompson will take it. And again, they've left it to Stubbs, it was almost a carbon copy of the incident that led to Stubbs scoring the goal. Brilliant thinking now, watch that corner particularly, I thought it happened on the goal, but certainly it's happening there. Watch how they run Taylor, who's the best header of the ball, under the ball, that leaves Stubbs on the, on the back post. You would have thought, to be fair, that Swindon would have learnt the lesson. But it's now Nyholt. Space opening up on the left-hand side here. For Joey Beecher. This is where he's got to go. It's him on the outside. Oh, Bolton. You see, that suits Bolton. All right, he's lucky to get away with a free kick there, Joey Beecher. That suited Bolton at the goal, and they were very, very happy to play him in field to where they got a, a pack of players. Fouled by Schnakers. Well, this is a long way out, but Fjortoft has pretty outrageous belief in his own ability, as you saw then. A little flick up that almost worked in the game against Millwall. I'm sure Mick McCarthy will remember that. I think he hit the bar, in fact, in that game from a very similar set piece. He tries things that uh, no one else, perhaps Matt Letizier, would even think about. Phillips. Robinson wins it back well. Nyholt. Beecham. A little bit encouraging, though. They're starting to stretch the, the Bolton team. They're making them hurry the ball a bit. Certainly Swindon's best period in the game, this. Now Fjortov. Well, he must be one of the few players in this division, at least, who could get a shot in from that kind of situation. Paula. And again. headed clear by Stubbs and Swindon have a corner good crossing very very good ball in but just watching I don't know how on this point too much I was watching Peter Thorne there who was outside the penalty box and he thought go on go in and attack that and it's really a comfortable defensive header where he should have been put under an awful lot of pressure there now the win might come to Swindon's uh, help here with this in-swinging corner and it's a good one and Taylor 
who is big and strong and brave, got there ahead of anyone else, but directed it wide. Yeah, I think Stubbs, I think it is here, just does enough, uh, the number six Stubbs, just does enough to turn uh, Taylor in here, he jumps against him, just does enough to stop him having a, a free header, but that would be, that would certainly be their best chance, I was going to say their only chance, but um, Fjortov didn't do bad with the shot just prior. Just turned him enough in the air so he can't come square onto it. Scored 13 goals in the season that uh, Swindon won promotion to the Premier League as it was then. Taylor and a lot of them were from uh, headers from corners and free kicks. A lot of corners, if I remember, were taken by Glenn Hoddle when they seem to recall him swerving a few. In. Here's Joey Beecham. And that was disappointing because uh, they certainly had enough men forward there, Swindon. Now they're on the back foot again. And again, Taylor shows his bravery with that header where the boots were flying. Beecham. Born on the far post. Yes! Peter Ford with the equaliser. And that's where he had to be, didn't he? He went in there as, a, as an orthodox striker. Good, good cross in there. And he's gone in and forced himself above Jimmy Phillips. In actual fact, I wasn't sure whether Phillips didn't get a touch on this. That's good play out here. Now, this, this is a good ball to the second post. That's where he's attacking it. When well, he's pulling on the last defender. No, it's, it is Thorns, he's taking complete a good tuck away, that. But you could sense that one coming, couldn't you, the last ten minutes? It's a lovely ball, and a crisp finish by Thorne. And what a start he's made to his Swindon career. He'd had one brief appearance as a substitute, played in the match of Burnley last week in the league, scored twice that day, and now a vital goal here in this Coca-Cola semi-final. Joey Beecher, hoping it on to Murray, but the ball out of play for the Swindon throw. Well, at 21, and not costing a fortune by any means by modern standards, Peter Thorne's already beginning to look a bargain. Link. Thorne's layer. Nyholt. Haller. This is much better from Swindon. They will go in with uh, no further setbacks. Greatly encouraged by the way they've ended this first half. Here's Beecham. And that was a dangerous cross again. They've got a corner out of it. Six minutes to go to half time. 1-1 one, one now. And the picture looking a lot brighter for the West Country team. Taylor forward for the corner. finish this Rod yes he's pulled on to the last defender I'm not too sure that Jimmy Phillips didn't get a touch on it and nodded it onto Thorne yet he could only have seen it late Thorne but at least that was that was the point I was trying to emphasize before at least he was attacking the penalty box there one or two occasions he was standing out waiting for people to cut the ball back to him foul there on Luke Nyholt has given Swindon a free kick what they have done, of course, Swindon, they've stepped the tempo and driven the game a lot more, and that's, that's stopped Bolton sort of dictating the pace and tempo. Martin Ling will take the free kick, helping it up towards Taylor. That's a good header! And Brannigan knew that he had to keep his eyes firmly on that ball from Taylor. O'Sullivan's clearance and that in fact is the end of the first half and uh, well the old cliche says a game of two halves that is a half of two halves if that doesn't uh, sound too complicated because Bolton played splendidly in the first 20 minutes fully deserved their lead with a goal coming from Alan Stubbs following a corner but then Swindon had the better of the last 20 minutes of that half and Peter Thorne's equaliser was well deserved and leaves this game very evenly in the balance. Thank you, Bob. 
Swindon, as we've heard, already in the programme, won the League Cup 26 years ago while they were members of the old third division. Bolton Wanderers' last major Wembley final, incidentally, was even further back in the days of Nat Lofthouse in 1958, one of seven FA Cup finals Bolton have reached. So which of these Ensley League Division 1 teams will be going to Wembley in April, I wonder? Very evenly matched and well-poised first half here, certainly. No changes made by either manager during the interval. A reminder that on the substitutes bench, Swindon have the experienced former Wolves striker Andy Much and Andy Thompson, a young uh, centre-back, as their two outfield players, John McGinley, their leading scorer, and defender Jason Didiot from Bolton. We're in possession now with Lee, and that's a dangerous cross, and Pat Alinen's shot rebounded back off Robinson to Schnakers. Forward again to Pat Alinen. And again, Pat Alinen gets it, and a good ball in the box. Chance here for Phillips! My word, that could have been a dramatic start to the second half. Jimmy Phillips surely should have scored. I think the game's got quicker in the second half. The ball's flying about now. There's, there's no time for anybody to settle on it at all. And since, since we've resumed, we've seen two very, very good uh, breaks from both teams. And here's another one. Fjord Tofton Fawn combining well. Fawn with a chance. Oh, he dragged it just inches wide of the far post. Well, we've also seen two glaring misses, haven't we? I mean, that was all down to Peter Thorne. He set the chance up himself, feeds a ball into Fjortov. Times he's run to perfection. Now, you would have fancied him here. It's on his right foot. It's set up nice. There's plenty of goal to shoot at, and he's dragged it wide. That's that's good combination between the two front players. But Sean Taylor almost ran into trouble, but got himself out of it with a determined challenge. And now Nyholt. Good ball for O'Sullivan. And it goes to Fjortov. Form for post! Twice in a matter of minutes, Peter Thorne could have added to his tally. I mean, that's good attacking the box. I mean, if, if early in the game, I thought he was a bit slow in getting into the box, though. He gets into the goal, box for his goal. Now, here's another one. He's read the flick from Fjortov. I actually think Fjortov's flick was a little bit slow for him. I think he'd have... Watch this, I think he'd have preferred this ball as it's touched to be in front of him. He's reading for it to be in front of him. A little bit slow for him, the ball. Nyholt, dispossessed by Patelein, who's had an excellent game. Phillips. Coyle has found some room. Can he find the net? My word, he wasn't far off it. Everything was right. A great spotter's badge there for Jimmy Phillips with the crossfield ball. Superb ball in his play. Once again, he's pulled up Taylor's shoulders. Cut. Lovely bit of skill. Flicks it round. And he'll think he's scored. The minute he's hit that, he th he'll be thinking to himself, well, there's another one on, on my list. But certainly the chances now are, are from both sides seem to be flowing thick and fast. Here's Lee. Good challenge by... Eddie Murray. You know, normally in a two-legged uh, affair like this, one side says, hang on a bit, we'll, let's, we'll set, we'll take the heat out of the game, we'll make sure we give nothing away, but at the moment they're both going hammer and tongues at each other. It's almost as if it's been played like a one-leg cup time. Green swinging one end, Patelina was in a good position there, Robinson had to get there first. Jortov. Good ball too. Form working hard to try and dispossess him but he's a strong lad form he won't be brushed aside and he's got a free kick for his team in the first portion of the game from McAteer and I must say those who are dismissive of the quality of the Ensley League might have to think again after seeing the way these two teams have performed so well on a difficult pitch today it's been a splendid game He's not happy that his defenders are listening to his instructions on this free kick. And hit well by Horlock. Not just enough bend on that. I actually thought he'd have gone closer than that. 
they certainly clipped it well. Kalainen. Thompson. Coyle again is peeled away from his defender. And Thompson didn't quite see him. I hope going in hard. He's a tough character, Luke Nyholtz. The Bolton players weren't too happy about that challenge. And amazingly, the uh, Bolton physio has come on the field, I think, before the referee signalled that he could come on. He uh, more or less took the situation into his own hands then. There's a full-bloody full challenge there between Nyholtz and uh, McAteer. In fact, he'll be lucky, McAteer, and young Jason will be lucky then not to be seriously hurt, but he, he looks as if he's trying to kick the tackle a little bit. And I always think when you kick the tackle, he's actually got there just in front of Nyholt. He just kicked the tackle and left himself wide open for the challenge. It's quite a bad knock he's got there in the nose. I think he's a scouser. Well. I thought you scousers were hard. You know there's no problem for the lad there. I just don't like the side of blood, particularly my own. John McGinley is going to come on here now. 4-0 in coil. McGinley has got 15 goals this season. What a lovely position to be in if you're Bruce Lee. They'll bring you on your leading goal scorer now. Lee. And they work hard then to make up for Murray's error. Did Swindon. So when you consider that they've got such important defenders as Paul Bowden and Ian Culverhouse out of the side, I think they've done really well. Swindon today. Culverhouse likely to be fit for the second leg, certainly. Here's Hakatia. And a good ball to Green. Danger here for Swindon. Great clearance by Robinson. Snake has hammers it back in. And then the shot by McAteer. It took a little deflection. And Hammond was equal to it. That was great defending by Robinson. I mean, some slick build up here. Some really slick build up down the right. Find Scott Green now. He's, he's not in an unaccustomed position there. He's curled the ball around the keeper. Full marks to Robinson. He's, he's worked really hard and he's done very, very well to see that one through. Brannigan's kick, but it's gone straight to Ling. Thompson did well to hold him up, but he still gets the cross in. Brannigan's there again in action. Robinson has had a splendid match, but he's now got himself into a bit of danger with Patalina. In the middle is McKinley. And Taylor must have realised that. Corner. Well, that's 2-1 if uh, Taylor doesn't get his head on that. Again, he's occupied that position. Good cross in, knowing full well that uh, the ball's going to be delivered with some quality. Thompson has come across to take it. McGinley a fresh threat now on the uh, corner kick. He's right on the goal line. Coleman is ahead of him. Stubbs is coming in on that back post, they have to get that clear, straight back in by Scott Green, and Hammond, who really today has uh, had a, a very good game, I think, in Swindon's goal, was right behind the line of flight. Quarter of an hour to go. Will we see a winner here today? Ball up for Swindon. Great ball, Beecham. Caught off from Thorne in the penalty area. Ooh, Coleman had to go to that cross. You know, it's lovely, isn't it? You're watching both sides going for each other, trying to win it as if it's a one-off. Can't help thinking if there were two big, experienced teams here, they'd be saying, hang on, all right, we'll make sure now we don't give anything away. These two sides are both trying to win it outright. Fjortov. He's done brilliantly here. Fjortov, great skill, and a chance here for Thorne! to go and shake the hand of Fjortov. Yeah, man, this is what Fjortov's good at. He holds it, he screens it, he turns it, he wriggles. Does Coleman there. Goalie parries it. And Thorne, actually, he may have had four on the day, mightn't he? Thorne, but uh, all right. Everybody will say that's a tapping. That's where strikers have to be. Murray does well to find Beecham. Coleman, 
the toss made it hard for him then, but he did well, Coleman. Porlock. Beecham with a good challenge. He drives on forward. Jortoff gets it back to him. Thorne in the middle again. Ling into the side netting. Well, Thorne's bravery has cost him and Brannigan dearly then. They're both out. If you're a striker with two goals to your name already, and when there's a cross so inviting as that one of Joey Beecham's, you don't think of anything else. You just go in and try and get your hat trick. I mean, that's a lovely ball down the side. And Beecham just wraps this one around. And it's almost one of those go on get in there. And he's missed it by a stud's length, hasn't he? Unfortunately for Brannigan, he didn't miss him. But it was a total accident, of course. And Keith Brannigan must have felt the full force of uh, Thorne studs in his chest then. I must admit, I actually thought Ling had got round is enough to get it back into the uh, into the goal. But that's lovely. That's a lovely cross out. That's his go on and score. Mm. He missed it. He's making up the ground now. He just can't get round the ball enough. Robinson looking for Fjortoft in the box. Green gets it clear. Lee helping it on. Robinson. Phillips will have to keep chasing here. Meantime, there was a collision off the ball, which was seen by the linesman. It involves McGinley, who's down injured. The linesman is flagging furiously on this near side of the field. McGinley went down. I think Robinson was the Swindon player involved. I didn't see it. The linesman did. I've got a feeling Robinson took a punch at McGinley off the ball, you know. If it is, he's in dead trouble. Well, that'll be a shame for Robinson, who's had a really good game as well. Well, indeed, he'll be very, very lucky to stay on if, if, uh, if that's the case. Well, everyone's attention obviously went with the ball upfield. Let's see if this will tell us what happened here. Well, there's a late challenge. Robinson's gone down. I think it's what happens now. I think it takes a little whack. Oh, it's just going out of picture. Just on the corner of the shot, yes. Yeah. But I think he has taken a little wrap at him there. Well, obviously the referee couldn't have seen it where he was but the linesman immediately once again it's that, that hoary old thing if you like retaliation because it, it was it was a little bit of a desperate challenge by McGinley it's a long consultation I can't think what on earth they got to talk about other than what happened there I think they must be discussing which train they're going home on I'd like to see a little bit of common sense applied here and maybe a booking may just book him and say hey, you're a lucky lad now then the referee marches across, heart in the mouth time. I must admit, I, 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 I can fear for the lad here. What colour will referee, it be? Referee looks a bit ominous, like a hanging judge. Is it yellow or red? It's red. And Robinson has one final little verbal snap at McGinley. And McGinley's being called aside, he's got a yellow card. As you saw, Robinson going off there, the referee showed a yellow card to McGinley so he obviously felt that the challenge was worthy of a booking now Robinson is dismissed for his retaliation well, that can't be right that cannot be right if he doesn't book him first time he saw the challenge he didn't see the punch now what he must have done he I would guess McGinley's bad mouth him or something like that because if he, if he sees the challenge originally Alan he's got to book McGinley regardless he didn't even stop the game did he so a bit of controversy right at the end here and it's a shame because uh, in Robinson's case in particular, it spoils what had otherwise been a very good day for him. He played well. McAteer swings one deep into Swindon territory. Taylor behind it. And Nyholt. Oh, that's a dangerous ball. And Thompson's onto it. He could go all the way here. Needed a bit of composure, and it wasn't there when he needed it. It's Phillips. And Sullivan couldn't reach it. McGinley. Patalainen in the middle. McGinley goes down under the challenge from Nyholt. And the referee's reaching for his cards again. And it's a yellow for Nyholt. Yeah, there's no question about that. He certainly blocked off McGinley as McGinley was rounding him. He certainly made an impact, McGinley, in his brief time on the field as substitute now here's one last moment of danger for Swindon Town perhaps Tam 
it in toward Katalainen. Swindon coped with it well. Scott Green races over because he can launch the ball a long way from these throw-ins. And launches it towards Katalainen. Helped on towards Thompson, and then that's a very good save by Hammond. I think it was going wide, but he wasn't to know that. Now what he's got to do to the whistle anyway, that's it. He hasn't got to do anything more. It's all over. Nicky Hammond with a thumbs up to the Bolton fans who applaud his final save. And huge applause from the Swindon fans for Peter Thorne's contribution to this game. Bolton in front early on from Alan Stubbs, threatening to run away with it at that stage. Swindon came back so splendidly, I believe, on the balance of play, they deserved their first leg victory. Two goals for Thorne, he could have had even more than that. And certainly, the only moment of controversy right at the end will not detract from an absolutely splendid game. The sending off of Mark Robinson involved in that incident with McGinley, which has produced a little bit of ill feeling on the field and in the stands. So the full-time score here at the county ground. Swindon Town 2, Bolton Wonders 1, the man of the match, the hero of the moment, Peter Thorne, was with Gary Newborn. Peter, what a sensational start for you. In your first full league match, you get two goals, and you get two goals in your first cup tie here for Swindon. Yeah, it's a great feeling. I just have to have a really good start, you know. Um, They're well made for you, both the goals, Beecham and Piotr. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, I can't say anything more about lads, but they're just amazing, you know. What a, what a great team playing in here. Hopefully, we're going to keep creating chances and going to Scott Wembley. Well, the big disappointment was the sending off, which was quite controversial because your mm -hmm. defender, Robinson, did seem to be kicked in the challenge. Eh? I, actually, I actually didn't see it, so I really can't say anything about that. OK, thank you. Well done. Right, and you actually, just before you go, you could have had a lot more as well just after half time. I mean, Swindon did so well in the second half. Yeah, of a couple of chances. Um, I was going to pull the wire there. I think it's a bubble. OK, right. Jan Theotok. Did you see the uh, sending off at all, the incident there? No, you didn't. But a good result for you then. You played much better in the second half. Yeah, we did. I mean, first half, we, we, it's the first, 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 first minute, we paid them too much respect. And then the second half, we just had it a goal. It was 1-1. One, one. We saw when they couldn't do more, the first 50 minutes, when we were, what do you say, peep crap. And uh, when we couldn't do more than that, we, we knew we had a chance, and I think we deserved to win. OK, well, you still got to do the second right. leg, but a good result.